In this video, you're going to learn how to create text grids in Prot. A text grid is a type of object in Prot that is used for annotation, segmentation, and the labeling of phonetic data. In order to create a text grid in Prot, you must first open the program by clicking on the Prot icon and then open the sound file you need. In order to do this, click on Open and Read from File. The sound file that I'm going to open for this demonstration is called Prot Exercise 2 Sample.Wave. Once I click on the file to read it into Prot, the file name appears in the object window. Click on View and Edit in order to open and play the file. Perro, viuda, el guante. Since this is a woman's voice, we should verify the following settings in Prot. Under the Spectrum menu, select Spectrum, then Spectrogram Settings. The view range should read 0 to 5000 Hz. Under the Spectrum menu, you will also see Dynamic Range. The Dynamic Range should be set at 50 dB. Under the Pitch menu, select Pitch Settings. Verify that the pitch range should be from 70 to 250 Hz. And finally, under the Intensity menu, select Intensity Settings. The view range should read from 40 to 100 decibels. Once you've verified these settings in Prot, return to the Prot Objects window and click on Annotate and select To Text Grid. A small dialog window will appear where you'll name the different tiers you'll be using to annotate the text file. Where it says, All Tier Names, replace Mary John Bell with the words Word, Gloss, Transcription. Where it says which of these are point tiers, delete the word Bell and leave the field blank. Once you have done this, click on OK. Now you will see another object appear in the Objects window in Prot. In order to do a text grid, you'll have to select both files in the object window and click on View and Edit. When the two files open, you'll see the sound window that has the waveform, the spectrogram, and the various text grid levels or tiers to do the annotation. In the text grid portion of the sound file window, you'll see a number next to each tier that you've created. When a tier is selected, you will see a small red hand to the left. That lets you know that it's the active tier where you can make changes or annotations. On the right side, you'll see the tier names that you typed earlier. In the center of the text grid, there are little bars with a circle on the upper portion that we'll use to create boundaries or divisions that will coincide with what we want to annotate. All you have to do to put up a boundary is to click in the waveform where you want a boundary and then click on the circle below. If you make a mistake, you can move the boundary by clicking on it and then dragging it to the correct position. To erase a boundary, select the boundary marker with your cursor. Click on Boundary in the upper menu and select Remove. The boundary marker should disappear. Now let's do some annotations with the first word. Select the first word in the waveform. In the waveform, click on the beginning of the word. Below the spectrogram, you will see a vertical gray line with a circle at each tier. Since we are working with the first tier, we'll click here to make a boundary mark. Now we're ready to mark the end of the word. Go to the end of the word, click in the waveform, and then click the circle in the tier. Once you've marked the beginning and the end of the word, click in the center of the tier. It is here where you will write the word that you hear. Type PERRO, P-E-R-R-O. Now do the same with Tier 2 for the first word. Click the beginning of the word, and then again click at the end of the word. Since we are working with Tier 2 now, click in the center of the two boundary markers you just created. Since Tier 2 is for glossing, We'll simply type the translation of the word in English, dog. Now we're ready to do Tier 3. Once we've indicated the boundary markers for Tier 3, 
we will do a phonetic transcription of the word using the International Phonetic Alphabet. To do the transcription, we will click in the center and we'll start with an open square bracket. Since the first syllable of the Spanish word perro is the primary or stressed syllable, we'll have to mark it. If you don't know how to type IPA symbols in PROT, you can click on Help and then Phonetic Symbols. A pop-up window will appear with three main options. Phonetic symbols for consonants, vowels, and diacritics. Diacritics are additional symbols similar to accent marks that you place on words. Since the primary stress mark in IPA is a diacritic, we'll click here. A pop-up menu will appear with the command codes that we need to make whatever diacritic mark we want. In this instance, we have to scroll down until we see primary stress. Here we see the code for the primary stress diacritic in IPA is the backward slash apostrophe and the number 1. We'll have to type it here. Let's see if that works. We'll have to type the code up here in the white box. Once we type the code, the diacritic symbol should appear in the text grid below. Now we are ready to finish the phonetic transcription of the word perro. Once you've finished with your text grid annotation, you're now ready to save the file. Go back to the Prot Objects window, highlight the text grid file you just made, click on Save, then Save as Text File. A small window will appear where you have the option of renaming your file. Now it's your turn to try your hand at creating a text grid in Prot.